Right, this is the half sheet we did in class. We did one through six in class on uh, Friday, uh, February 8th, and we finished uh, number seven, eight, nine, and 10 um, on Monday, uh, February 11th. Okay. So, okay, so state if the triangles in each pair are similar. If so, state how you know they are similar and write a similarity statement. Okay, so, um, the first one, the first, well, the first thing we got to note is we have three ways to show that triangles are similar. Well, four ways, really. We can show that all the angles, all the corresponding angles are congruent and all the sides are proportional. Or we can use three shortcuts. We have angle-angle similarity theorem. We have the angle-angle similarity theorem. We have the side-side-side similarity theorem and side-angle-side I'm just going to try to use the um, Epson pen, so um, hopefully my writing will be legible. I'm a little bit concerned about that, but better to try it here than in class. Okay, so angle-angle, side-side-side, and side-angle-side similarity theorems. Okay. So first thing I want to look for is angles. Okay, so for number one, do we have any pairs of congruent angles? Yes, we do. We have angle SUT. It's going to be congruent to angle... Uh, EUD. Do we have any other pairs of angles that are congruent? It doesn't seem like we have enough information to say anything about angle S and E or angle T and D. Okay. So we only have one pair of angles, so we can't use angle angle. Let's look for side angle side. If we look at our sides, we're going to get 16 over 40. Okay. And we're going to get 16 over 39. And those two are not equal. Since the ratios of those corresponding sides are not equal, we can conclude that the triangles are not similar. So our answer here is no. They are not similar. Um, so it's unclear really if DU corresponds with UT or if uh, EU corresponds with UT. You could have a situation where it's twisted or flipped um, we don't really know, but in either case, you since these are both 16, you get 16 and 39 and 16 and 40. Okay, but we want to pick our corresponding sides, set up our ratios. Uh, if they're equal, then the sides are proportional. If they're not equal, the ratios are not equal. Then the um, if the ratios are not equal, then the sides are not proportional. The sides are proportional. The triangles are not similar. So that one is a no. Number two. Okay. Um, we don't have any information about angles, so we want to look at sides. We have information on all the sides, so all three pairs of sides. So let's look at um, AC. So AC is the largest number. Okay, It's 84. Okay, So we want to pick the largest number on the other side, which is 14. So that's HF. HF. Okay. okay. Then we can look at another side. Let's call it, uh, let's look at AB. Okay, that's the median number. So the middle number here is going to be 12. So that's HG. Okay, then we want to look at the last side, CB and G. Largest sides are corresponding, the middle sides and the smallest sides, if they're going to be similar. If they're going to be similar, the largest sides are going to correspond with each other, and the shortest sides are going to correspond with each other. Um, we don't know if they're similar, but if they're going to be similar, that's going to be the case. So we have AC and H up, right? This triangle ends up being flipped, if they're going to be similar. Okay. Um, so put in our numbers, we have 84 over 14. 72 over 12, and 48 over 8. Okay. See, this is why I don't like the pen. It's hard to write. 84 over 14, 72 over 12, and 48 over 8. So that's going to give us... 6, 6, and 6. So we get 6 equals 6 equals 6. 
So since all those ratios equal six, since all the ratios are the same, they're all equal, we know the sides are proportional. And if we have three sides that are proportional, we know the triangles are similar. So yes, by side, side, side similarity. Okay, yes, by side, side, side similarity. Okay. Want to finish our similarity statement. So CBA, so what corresponds with C? That's going to be F. So triangle F. Uh, B corresponds with G. F, G, H. Okay. F, G, H. Okay. Go to number three. Okay. Is there a way to clear the... Clear the board? I swear there's a way to clear the board. Okay. Uh, number three. Okay, so again, I, what I want to look for here are angles. So I have one pair of vertical angles here. Right, angle uh, MVL is congruent to angle um, UVT. Okay, that's the vertical angle theorem. We have vertical angles. Those vertical angles are congruent. Okay, and then we have information about our sides. So um, when we pick one triangle, this is 14. So MV is going to correspond with, it's the larger of the two sides. So it's going to correspond with VT, which is 49. And then we have LV, which is 8. So LV is going to correspond with UV which is 28. Okay, that's going to reduce the fraction. You just put it in your calculator, get a decimal, that's fine, or we can reduce it. We're going to get 2 over 7 and 2 over 7. Okay, so we have one pair of congruent angles, and we have two sides that are All right, here's our three theorems. So we have one pair of angles and two sides, so that's going to be side, angle, side, similarity. So this is yes, by side angle, side similarity. Okay. Let's complete our congruent statement. We have triangle. So what corresponds with V? It's going to be V. Corresponds with U is going to be L. And T is going to be M. P L M. So that one is a yes by side angle side similar number four okay number four okay number four um so the first three were triangles okay so we had the shortcut again angle angle too high. Angle, angle, side, 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 angle, side. Okay, That's only going to apply for triangles. If it's not a triangle, we don't have any of those shortcuts. Okay, We can't look for two pairs of angles or three proportional sides or um, side, angle, side, you know, one pair of angles and two proportional sides. We have to find all of them to be true, right? We have to find four pairs of angles for quadrilaterals, four pairs of angles that are congruent, and four sides that are proportional. Okay, both. We need both conditions to be true in order to say they are similar. All right. So if we looked at the sides, we know 8 over 8, 8 over 8, 8 over 8, and 8 over 8. Okay, that's going to give us 1 equals 1 equals 1 equals 1. Okay, so we know the sides are proportional, okay? But we need to find are the sides proportional and are all the corresponding angles congruent? Well, if we notice here, we have four right angles. Okay, it makes it a rectangle, four right angles. 
okay, which means the course, the similar quadrilateral, a similar polygon is going to have four right angles. We notice this one does not have any right angles. Okay, so angle J is not congruent to angle S. Angle K is not congruent to angle T. Angle M is not congruent to angle R. And angle L is not congruent to angle E. Okay, so we don't have any pairs of corresponding angles that are congruent. So the only thing we can conclude here is a big no. Okay. Number five, we have triangles. So again, we can use the shortcuts, our three shortcuts, angle, angle, side, 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 or side, angle, side, if they apply. Okay. Uh, let's look at angles first. We have one pair of angles that's congruent here. Angle A is congruent to angle K. We also know that we have right angles, so angle M, or angle B is congruent to angle M. So right there we have one pair of angles that's congruent and a second pair of angles that's congruent. Since we have two pairs of angles that are congruent, we can conclude by angle-angle similarity that the triangles are similar. We can conclude by angle angle similarity that the triangles are similar. Okay, the sides, they're just trying to throw us off. Okay, make you look for side angle side or side side side. Look for the angles first. If we have two pairs of angles and we do, we know the triangles are similar. You would find that these are proportional as well, right? For example, 12 over 21. Should equal 20 over 35. And that's going to be 4 sevenths equals 4 sevenths. Okay, so we know it's still going to be true. Okay, angle A. Okay, then the last one, number six. Okay, we need, okay, we need all four pairs of angles to be congruent and all four sides to be proportional. So we know the angles are congruent. They're all 90 and these are all 90. So angle X and K corresponding angles that are congruent. Angle Y and angle L are corresponding angles that are congruent. Angle W and angle N are corresponding angles that are congruent. And angle Z and angle M are corresponding angles that are congruent. They're all 90. Okay. But let's, let's look at the sides. Okay. Four, um, we have four and four, nine and nine, four and four and six and six. If these are going to be similar figures, these smallest sides are going to correspond with the smallest sides of the other one. And the largest sides are going to correspond with the largest sides. So four is going to correspond with four. And then nine is going to correspond with six. Then um, four is going to correspond with four. And nine is going to correspond with six okay well four over four is one and nine over six is 1.5 or three halves so we know these are not equal therefore we can conclude that the figures are not similar okay they are not similar um because their sides are not proportional okay they're both rectangles but their sides are not proportional. Right. Uh, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So we want to, um, they're telling us now that they're sim the polygons are similar. We want to find the value of x. Okay, we want to find the value of x. Let me see if I can zoom in more. Okay, because I've kind of lost my ability to write effectively. Okay. So it's telling us they're similar. Um, we have to come up with a proportion to solve for x, right? So since they're similar, no, we know the sides, the corresponding sides are proportional, which means we can set up a proportion to solve for x. Okay. So I noticed A has two arcs here, and Q has two arcs. And C has one arc and Y has one arc. So X plus 5 is between those two. So AC corresponds with QY. 
See, look how big that is. Jeez. Let me see if I can save myself some space here. So A doesn't write where I want it to write. QI. Like, look at it. It's writing on top of the... All right, whatever. ACQI. Okay. So AC corresponds with QI. Then I have um, CD. So it starts at the one arc and goes away. So it's going to start at Y and W. So we're going to have uh, CD over YW. Okay. That's going to give us X plus 5. It's not even on the point. Like, how do we? Can I turn it off and turn it back on? I'm going to switch to the marker. I don't know. AC over QY. I can't, I can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. AC over QY. Okay, and let's get a, as you said, CD over YW. Okay, so that's going to give us X plus 5 over 15 and 4 over 5. You can do it the other way. You can get 15 over x plus 5 and 5 over 4, but you can't mix and match. If your numerator is coming from this one, your numerator in the second one has to come from this one as well. Okay, you can't do x plus 5 over 15 and 5 over 4. You have to stay consistent. Okay, x plus 5 is to 15 as 4 is to 5. Okay, because this one, right, our ratio is going to be 4 over 5. Okay, so... This, tri this, this quadrilateral is four-fifths the size of this one, and this one's five-fourths the size of the other one. Okay, so if you mix and match, you're screwing up your ratios. You're going to have a four-fifth and a five-fourth. And four-fifths does not equal five-fourths. Okay, so you got to stay consistent. X plus five is to 15 as four is to five, or 15 is to X plus five as five is to four. Okay. Can't mix and match your ratios here. Right, and then we cross multiply, we get 5x plus 15 equals 15 times 4. Okay, 5, uh, we have to distribute, so we get 5x plus, uh, I'm sorry, it's 5x plus 5. Okay, so we get 25 equals 60. Subtract 25, 5x equals 35, divide by 5. X equals seven. Okay. So we get X equals seven. We plug it in, we're going to get 12. Seven plus five is 12. So that's 12 over 15 equals four over five. That reduces to four fifths, four fifths, right? They both equal 0 0.8. 12 divided by 15 is zero. Okay, number eight. So X is going to be seven. Okay. Number eight, we want to find X. So again, we notice we have one arc at P. So P is going to correspond with T. Okay, and then Q is going to correspond with R. So we're going the other way. So this is X plus three. So X plus three is going to correspond with two X plus two. All right, that's uh, PB and um, TH, and that's going to then equal BS and um, H. 
check, which is two over. Again, in class, a lot of people were saying three halves. Again, you can't do that. X plus three is to two X plus two as two is to three, right? So the ratio here is two thirds. And our scale factor is two thirds. This triangle was two thirds the size of this one. Okay, but this one's three halves the size of that one. So if you say X plus three over two X plus two, and then say three over two, that's not true because this one to this one is two thirds, not three halves. You can't mix and match. If you said two X plus two over X plus three, then you could say three over two. Okay, but you can't mix and match. You have to stay consistent. Cross multiply. We get three times X plus three. And we get two times two X plus two. Okay, three X plus nine. 4x plus 4, subtract 3x, we get 9 equals x plus 4, subtract 4 from both sides, and we get x equals 5. Okay, plug it in. 5 plus 3 is 8. Um, 2 times 5 is 10. 10 plus 2 is 12. So we get 2 over 3 equals 8 over 12. 8 divided by 12 is 2 thirds. Okay, so x is 5. Number 9. Move it over so I have room to write. Number 9. Okay, number 9, same process. It's just a little more difficult with the algebra, but it's the same process. Right, set up our, our proportion. So we know these, these quadrilaterals are similar. So we know MP is going to correspond with WZ. Right, it's between the two right angles. Okay, and then we know PR corresponds with ZV. So we get 2X plus 2 over 4X and X plus 1 over 3X minus 1. Corresponding sides are um, 2x plus 2 and 4x. <coughs> and um, x plus 1 and 3x minus 1. Cross multiply, so we get 2x plus 2, 3x minus 1, 4x and x plus 1. Okay. Um, foil, first outer, inner, last. Right, so 2x times 3x is 6x squared. Okay, 2x times negative 1 is negative 2x. 2 times 3x is 6x. And then 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Distribute on the other side, 4x squared plus 4x. Combine like terms, we have 6x squared plus 4x. Minus 2 equals 4x squared plus 4x. Um, I notice 4x and 4x, so we can get rid of that. So minus 4x from both sides, and those are going to cancel. Okay, we're left with 6x squared minus 2 equals 4x squared. Okay. Now I notice we just have x squared, so we want to get x squared by itself. So subtract 4x squared, and we get... 2x squared minus 2 equals 0. Add 2 to both sides. 2x squared equals 2. Divide by 2. We get x squared equals 1. We take the square root of both those. We get x equals plus or minus 1. So is it 1 or negative 1? Well, if we plug in a negative 1, we get negative 1 plus 1, which is 0. Can we have a side length of 0? No, we can't. So we know our only choice is going to be x equals So we set it up the same way we set up the other ones. Okay, so if you're struggling with how to set it up, go back and look at 7 and 8 or some other problems we've done. Okay, but the setup is the same. Once you set it up, cross multiply. So 2x plus 2 times 3x minus 1. Okay, that's going to equal 4x times x plus 1. On this side, we distributed the 4x to so get 4x squared plus 4x. On this side, we foiled. So first... Outer, inner, last, so 2x times 3x is 6x squared. 
two x times negative one is negative two x two times three x is six x two times negative one is negative two we combine like terms okay we notice we had a four x term on both sides so we could subtract four x from both sides and get rid of it leaving us six x squared minus two is four x squared then from here we just have x squared one variable um, we want to get x squared by itself and then take the square root of both sides okay um, so this is one plus one is two uh, two this is four four times one is four and uh, three minus one is two so we get um, four over four equals two over two which is one equals one so we know we got the right answer there can we know um, these sides are proportional because we know that quadrilaterals are similar because it tells us so in these directions. Okay, number 10. Right, we have some pentagons, some irregular pentagons here. Pentagons because they have five sides. Here we have two variables in the problem, x and y, and they want us to find x and y. So we're going to have to set up two different proportions because we need two different equations to solve for two different variables. So we know j has one arc and w has two arcs. And so does s has two and r has one. So we know x plus one is going to correspond with eight. So we know wj corresponds with SR. Okay, we know JC is going to correspond with RP, right? It's one to nothing, one to nothing. Okay, and then we know our top pieces. So the two to the right angle, two to the right angle is going to be WV over TS. Okay. If we put our numbers in, we have X plus one over eight. 3x plus 1 over 20, and 3y minus 11 over um, y plus 3. All right, we don't need all three. So we have an equation. We just need two of the ratios. So uh, we want to pick the two that have just x's. That way we only have one variable. Okay, so let's do x plus 1 and over 8, and 3x plus 1 over 20. Cross multiply, we get 20 times x plus 1 and 8 times 3x plus 1. So 20x plus 20, 24x plus 8, because we have to distribute. Remember, we're distributing. Okay, subtract 20x. We get 20 equals 4x plus 8. We subtract 8 from both sides, and we get 12 equals 4x. Divide by 4, and we get 3 equals x. Okay. If we put the x back in, we're going to get 3 plus 1 over 8. And um, 3 times 3 plus 1 over 20, which is y plus 3. So we're going to get 4 over 8 and 10 over 20. And then we have 3y minus 11 over y plus 3. Okay, so we can set um, this one equal to either one of these. Okay, so let's do the first one. So 4 over 8, right? This is 4. So this is 3 plus 1, which is 4. So 4 over 8 is going to equal 3y minus 11 over y plus 3. Okay, you don't need to do all this. I'm just doing this to try and help. If this is hurting you or confusing you, don't do it. Okay, x plus 1 over 8. 3x plus 1 over 20 helps us find x. Once we have x, we can substitute it in for um, x plus 1, and we get 3 plus 1 is 4. Then 4 over 8 is going to equal 3y minus 11 over y plus 3. Cross multiply, 4y plus 3 equals 8, 3y minus 11. 4y plus 12 equals 24y minus 88. Right? Again, we're distributing. Subtract 4y from both sides, 12 equals 20y minus 88, add 88, 
we get 100 equals 20y divided by 20, and we get y equals 5. Okay, if we substitute that in, we should see that they're all going to be equal. So um, 3 times 5 is 15. 15 minus 11 is 4. 5 plus 3 is 8. Okay, so then we have 5 over 8, 10 over 20. So this is going to be 1 half equals 1 half equals 1 half. So we know we got the right answers. X is 3 and Y is 5. Okay. So that's the half sheet from Friday and Monday. And same thing, just set your ratios up and solve. It's just a little more complicated because we had two variables. Since we have two variables, we need two separate proportions. They're all coming from the same thing. So we're just splitting them up.